So here's a nice question. Um, we're given a certain format for the position of a seal. And you can see it's given in parametric form. All right, it's given the X component and the Y component. And there's a number of things we can do with that. I'm, I quite like to write it as a um, vector. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that straight away. So we remember R is usually the, the letter we give to the position vector. And so we can put them both into this notation. No particular benefit to it, I just like doing it. Cos of t over 2, 10 sine t over 2. And part A wants the seal's position initially, so that's obviously when t equals 0. And part 2 is when t equals pi. So really, you're just going to go and substitute um, these in, right, and just calculate the actual x and y positions. So let's try it. Uh, x equals 10 cos 0 and y equals 10 sine 0. And you should quickly really be able to do that. Obviously, um, sine of 0 is 0, so the whole thing is 0 here. Transfer across. And cos of 0 is 1, so 10 times 1 is 10. So that's a very quick and easy first entry. Um, I've put some extra points in here. Let, let's go ahead and calculate this one as well. Um, pi over 2. Um, so that will be uh, x equals 10 times by cos uh, pi over 2, but it's divided by 2. So this is cos of pi over 4. And I know cos pi over 4 is about 0 0.7, so times 10 is about 7. So that's the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate is actually going to be just the same, because 10 sine of pi over 4. Uh, sine of pi over 4 is the same as cos pi over 4 is about 0 0.7, so it's about 7.7. 7. Let's try, um, oh my bad, that should be for the pi over 2, right? So let's just make sure that goes in the right place. Uh, pi over 2, uh, 7.7. 7. Um, if I try and substitute 1 in place of the t, I'll have to reach for my calculator, right? Um, oh, notice also I'm using pi, so clearly the, these functions are in radians, right? So radians. It's important that when we're doing graphing, and we're going to probably do some differentiation, then um, graphing in radians is always better, always advised. So let's try the, the next part, the, this part 2, when t equals pi. Let's go and have a little look at that. So we've obviously got the x equals 10 cos of t pi over 2 and y equals 10 sine pi over 2. And you'll remember that cos pi over 2 is 0, so 10 times 0 is 0. And sine pi over 2 is 1. OK, so we've, we've got an idea of how this picture is building up now. So if we just draw a mini, a mini graph here, we have the x and the y here. So initially, when t equals 0, x is 10 y is 0. At some stage later, after pi over 2 seconds, we're on 7, 7. And after pi seconds, we're on 0, 10. OK, so this looks like it's some kind of... Kind of makes sense, right? Some kind of curve. Is it a circle or is it just a curve? All right, so this is from uh, t equals 0, and this is t equals pi seconds later. All right, so that's a big help because now... I think we can clearly see um, for B, is the seal swimming clockwise or anticlockwise? Well, we, we can clearly see from the graph, right, that it's, let me just put my pen on, that it's going in this way. So that's definitely anticlockwise. Oh, oops. <laughs> and what you'll probably understand is that if we're going in this direction, that's pi seconds, then surely this will be repeated for another pi. It'll be repeated again for another pi because of symmetry and another pi. So isn't that 4 pi to get all the way around back to the start? And that should make sense to you because if you think about the original functions that were given, if we have a look here, uh, the usual uh, period or wavelength of cosine and sine is 2 pi. But because it's multiplied by a half, we divide by a half, and we get the new period or wavelength, which is 4 pi. So this is how long it takes to get back to the start, its repeating period. So that all ties together nicely with our knowledge of sine and cosine.
Um, we can do all of this without the calculator, actually, uh, which is quite nice. Um, but I will show you what the calculator can give us as well. Uh, part D, find the velocity vector. Ah, okay. So that's why it's quite nice, I think, to have our position vector in terms of a vector. Because isn't the velocity vector, velocity is just the derivative of displacement, right? And so we just have to go and find the derivative of those two expressions. So we need to know the derivatives of trig functions. And we need a little bit of the chain rule kicking in. Because inside the bracket is not just t or x, it's t over 2. So I'm just going to go write the answer straight down. And I'm, I'm sure you'll remember how to do it. So for d, uh, the velocity vector. So we go ahead and differentiate 10 cos t over 2. Uh, cos becomes negative sine. The 10 stays where it is. But we need to times by the derivative of the inner, which is a half. Now the bottom one, the derivative of sine is cos. So that stays 10. That flips to cos of t over 2 times by the derivative of the inner, which is a half. Therefore, this tidies up nicely into negative 5 sine t over 2. And this is 5 cos t over 2. And there's your velocity vector. Uh, and the final thing, at what speed is the seal traveling? Um, well, this is a little bit naughty, um, but we, we can sort it out. And um, it might involve a trig identity because, remember, speed oops, speed equals the square root of the negative 5 sine t over 2 squared plus 5 cos t over 2 all squared. Now there's something sneaky that happens here because what we'll get is we'll get um, 25 inside the bracket uh, sine squared t over 2 plus cos squared t over 2 and we want the square root of all of that. Uh, there's a little trick because this expression, sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of an angle, is actually equal to 1. So this is just root 25, so the answer is actually 5. Now the units are uh, meters per second, so it's swimming at 5 meters per second. Um, another way I suppose you could have done it is by understanding that actually this particular path is a circle. Right, circle. And so the circumference of the circle is the total distance travelled by the seal in one lap. And of course, the total distance is 2 pi times the radius, and we know the radius is 10. That's the distance. And the time it took us, the time it took us was 4 pi. So you can see clearly that this becomes 5. All right. So that, that's a nice nice little trick at the end, um, 5 meters per second. And the final thing is to just have a little look at the, the calculator. So if we do that, now we can actually type in parametric equations. So in a graphing uh, window, menu, graph entry, and we're going to go to a parametric. And so x1 of t, uh, this was 10 times by cosine of uh, t divided by 2. And the bottom one was, I think, 10 sine t divided by 2. Now you've got to have a quick look that we're actually going to plot this function for time from 0 to 6.28. Right, now notice 6.28 is 2 pi. Right now, just what, see what happens when we do this. Ah, okay, so it only goes from here all the way around to here and we can we understand why because that's 2 pi after pi seconds it's up here after 2 pi it will be here so basically if we want to see the full circle we would have to adjust this and make sure this goes up to um, 4 pi and we can type in 4 times by and just grab a little pi button there 
Uh, maybe the step we can make it as a bit more accurate, 0 0.05. It's like an iterative method. And, and there you go. How nice is that, right? Let's just make sure that we get the full view on here. So negative 12. Um, and you know what? I think it might be nice if you do menu, window zoom, uh, zoom square is nice, right? So if we go down to zoom square, we get the same scale on both axes. And then let's zoom out. Menu, window zoom, zoom out. Oh, isn't that beautiful? A perfect circle. So it's a circular motion, right, with components of X and Y position vectors, right, position vectors as cosine and sine. Then we get this beautiful circular motion. Hope that helped. Uh, let's go back to the, uh, the good notes. Let's make sure we can see what's going on there. And there you have it.